Uh, good morning, and, uh, and, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to, to be with you here today. Uh, as mentioned, my name is Jim Lambert. I'm the Design Engineering Manager of, of Bosch Rex Roth Canada. And um, for the next 15 to 20 minutes, and Michelle, I promise, only 10 to or 15 to 20 minutes, I don't want a sign that says, get off the stage now. But I'm really excited about this technology. Um, by way of specific application, to introduce you to the world of 3D laser scanning and some of the advanced manufacturing technologies that are available to us today. My, uh, my presentation entitled Getting the Point Across, Leveraging Point Cloud Data for Design Engineering Applications will provide you a little bit of background on the technology that we used to gather information at a brownfield site, leveraging that point cloud information in the 3D CAD system, which allowed us to facilitate an, enti uh, an entire piping assembly uh, for our customer, Atero Graphite. There's a little bit mentioned about myself. I, I think it's always good to have a better understanding of a speaker's background and their exposure to engineering challenges and specific applications um, so that you may be able to get a better idea of my approach to some of the problem solving that we experience on a day-to-day -day basis in, in the mechanical space. So a little bit about myself. Uh, again, as mentioned, I am a Naira College graduate from 1983. And believe it or not, uh, scientific calculators did exist. In fact, uh, call me sentimental, but I still have my TI-30. Thank you. I've been a proud member of OSET since 1985, with uh, 32 years of Bosch Rex Roth uh, mechanical design experience in industrial hydraulics. Spent about 15 years at that time on the drafting board. Anybody remember what they were? Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, eventually becoming a CAD administrator. We got our first CAD system in 1988 and eventually becoming design engineering manager, uh, a, a title which I uh, still hold today since 1991. Um, I also have uh, some responsibilities with uh, Naira College as far as the, the PAC committee is concerned, and I also sit on their uh, alumni board. Um, I represented Niagara College in 2008 for a Premier, uh, Premier's Award nominee in the area of technology. Uh, my greatest honor, though, was being presented the George Brewer Ash Langford Memorial Award in 2011. And um, looking back over my 30-plus year career, I can honestly say, honestly say that it was an honor and a privilege to be um, recognized by the members of, of OSET in this way. So thank you. Um, uh, to further set the scene for my presentation, um, I want to talk a little bit about the past. I'm an old guy, so you have to bear with me. But I think it's also important to provide a brief background on our, our design roots and where we've come from as an engineering department because it is from our department and many others like ours in the past that the existing infrastructure that we have today exists. And so though I'm an old guy, as I said, bear with me as we remember the olden days. Um, our design engineering department was, uh, was formed in 1969 to support custom machine engineering and design. Back then, it consisted of one designer, one, uh, design, one designer and one engineer. Our applications were all done on the drafting board until about 1988 when we acquired a mainframe with a bunch of workstations connected to it. We tried to get faster in 95 with Unix, but that didn't work out so well. Eventually, we migrated to AutoCAD in, 2000, or sorry, in 1999, and eventually migrating all of our applications to 3D in 2004 to support the work that we were doing for the St. Lawrence Seaway project. So as you can see from a company standpoint, uh, we'd always try to stay on the leading edge, edge of technology, but despite that fact, there's around 35 years there where, at least for Bosch Rexroth, the design of our machinery was taking place in 2D. Our design department today looks much different, as I'm sure many of your uh, engineering departments look as well. Uh, we have powerful 3D visualization tools available to us to enhance engineering technologies at, at our fingertips. For ourselves, we have 10 designers, we have an administrative assistant, um, revolving co-op students from Niagara College, which has worked out very well. And we, have, we use uh, AutoCAD Mechanical, we use Autodesk Inventor for 3D applications. We have all forms of software to perform finite element analysis, computer, uh, c computational fluid dynamics, all wonderful tools. Um, all designs currently right now are engineered completely in 3D in digital space. We can experience it before it becomes real. And this is our design engineering world today. May I suggest, however, that when retrofitting existing infrastructure, 
where no historical 2D, let alone 3D, exists, that these tools alone that we have at our disposal uh, cannot ensure 100% success rate. They're fit form and function of a mechanical solution. So we have two dis very distinct times in engineering history where so often we're challenged to make the two coexist in the same space. So how do we tie these two diverse worlds together to aid in your design dilemma? Well, back in 2003, when we embarked on the St. Lawrence Seaway project to ensure that our hydraulic cylinders would interface with existing infrastructure at the locks, we sent a designer out to the site with a measuring tape and a camera. And with the graph paper and pencil in hand, depending on the complexity of the information that he had to capture, he would create conceptual sketches and so forth to assist the engineering department in coming up with the final assembly. But only upon installation was it discovered that a feature that had not been captured during that initial site visit now presented huge design challenges and resulting in costly repairs out in the field. Definitely the wrong time in a project life cycle to be encountering engineering problems. Look familiar? I'm a mechanical guy, but I can still relate to civil problems. Um, within the last several years though, however, 3D laser scanning has been successfully bridging that gap between the world of 3D design that we find ourselves in today and being able to tie into the existing infrastructure of the past. Um, many of you may be familiar with laser scanning, maybe some of you not, so to even the playing field a little bit, I thought I would quickly overview two terms which will be used in my presentation. The first is a 3D scanner, the second 3D point cloud. So the scanner, which you see on the left, is, uh, is a device that analyzes real world objects in an environment and it's captured, the data is captured with a series of X, Y, and Z coordinates. The point cloud is what's kind of moving over there to the right, and it's the resulting data that's been collected from the laser scanner itself. These terms will become clear as I go through my presentation, but should you have any questions, feel free to uh, ask them at the end of the presentation, um, or feel free to stop by the booth as well. I have a, a poster presentation there as well. So on with the application. I was contacted by our field service department in the fall of 2013, um, requesting some design assistance with a hydraulic installation that was going to be taking place at the Kearney uh, Mine for Ontario Graphite. The site is the largest confirmed mineral resource of any North American graphite deposit and one of the largest individual flake graphite deposits known uh, outside of China and North Korea. And the Kearney site is located about 300 kilometers north of Toronto and it's a very, in a very remote area. It's not very easily accessible. And uh, all the piping that we had to do had to be designed and prefabricated for assembly on site. And we were prepared to assist. I said no problem at all. Uh, but there was a small problem. I had requested 2D, or actually re requested 3D information on the building, and they laughed. And they said, well, we may have some 2D drawings, but they're probably so old, they're out of date, um, they're probably of no use to you. So the scope of the supply was this. Uh, we were going to supply hydraulic power units, as well as Hagelin's drives, uh, to power the mills. But then the, the key feature, though, is we had to had to uh, provide high pressure weldless piping between these two uh, pieces of equipment. And given that the information regarding the, inter, uh, the internals of the building were not available, this created its own set of challenges uh, with many internal obstructions and columns and stairways restricting the, uh, access to space to give us clear piping runs. So originally we started, we always start with the easy stuff first. So we knew where, uh, where the foundation was. There was uh, the only known feature in the building was an old foundation where the original pinion gearbox and clutch had been located. So we gutted that out and we uh, rendered the Haglund's gearbox mounted into position. Um, but yet, how would we design and prefabricate the piping that had to connect to those motors? That, we thought it was simple enough, but it wasn't that simple. Here's a picture of the main hydraulic drive and the following picture uh, displays uh, the internals of the building and the complexity of the piping install. And I knew that photographs and sending a couple designers on site to take measurements and sketches and so forth would not provide us enough uh, information to accurately design the piping runs that we needed in 3D. We needed an alternate solution and an alternate solution was 3D scanning. So our plan was this, we would complete five scans of the milling, uh, the milling building with a ferro-focused 3D scanner provided by a partnership that we have with, uh, with Niagara Research. 
So the point cloud data would be uh, collected and then imported into our CAD system back in Welland. Um, we would uh, prefabricate the piping then based on the design and uh, return it back to the uh, Kearney mine for final assembly. I felt that this would uh, greatly reduce not only the time spent on site to capture the information initially, but it would re reduce the skilled trades needed and all the equipment that would be needed on site in order to pre bend or to, to uh, manufacture all the piping at the site. Now, although I'm the face providing the sponsorship to the application this morning, behind the scenes were very uh, many dedicated, uh, knowledgeable designers, technicians, and technologists. And uh, combined with the partnerships that we had with Niagara College and Ni Niagara Research, as well as, as well as Faro and Autodesk, I, I was really uh, confident that this application uh, would, would be a success. So with any new technology though, there are challenges encountered, learning curves. We had never used this type of technology before, um, particularly in field installations. And there were ch challenges just trying to find the right kind of software that was gonna manage these millions of points and, and, and gigs of data that we were going to be collecting. Um, so we overlooked some line of sight issues prior to scanning, which created some problems later on. And creating effective work planes inside the CAD software uh, also posed a problem because uh, you presume everything is square and flat, but when you scan something, it could be skewed and uh, definitely exposes less than perfect construction techniques, depending on the builder. Um, we couldn't find an all-in-one software to, uh, to, to, to manage all these data points, and I don't want to go into too much detail regarding the, uh, regarding the software tools, but for those interested, we used uh, Faro Scanner, we used Faro Scene 5.1, we used Autodesk Recap, which is, a, which is a great way of managing point cloud information, and then Autodesk Inventor, which is the native software that we're using on a regular basis to design all of our mechanical solutions. There were a variety of other software tools that we tried, but uh, with little success. So we executed the scans at the Kearney mine. Um, they, we used these registration spheres. I don't have one right now, but it, it looks like a, a large white softball and um, use them in aiding the alignment of the scans later on. You can appreciate the fact that you need to have a frame of reference so that when you're moving the scanner from one location to another, the software needs to register or align all these scans afterwards and they need frames of reference. And so these balls, uh, these registration spheres actually do that. Um, so each time you move the scanning head, the scanner needs a frame of reference. So we later used the Ferrocene software to register those scans. So once the scans were completed at the Kearney site, we brought the data back to our engineering office in Welland for further processing. And as mentioned uh, from the previous slide, uh, the multiple scans were registered or aligned together and stitching them all together into one large scan that we could see and scene. And then we used Auto, uh, Autodesk Recap to actually clean up the scan and to put some, uh, some work files together. This uh, following animation shows the captured point cloud inside of Faro Scene software. The multiple scans have been all stitched together and to make one single scan with representing millions of points, each with its own X, Y, and Z coordinate. Every feature inside the building is now clearly defined with a multitude of visibility options available. You will also notice as you fly around, you'll see the actual technicians there with their hard hats and orange safety vests on. Um, uh, no stairwell, column, or obstruction were, uh, were overlooked, and the data captured represents within plus or minus a half of a millimeter the actual brownfield site. The most unique aspect of the data lies in the fact that each point has a location in space in our CAD system and can be measured and referenced at any time. So once we had the files converted, they were overlaid into our uh, Autodesk Inventor software so that our piping design could begin. And uh, using point clouds alone, it's, it's difficult to, uh, to work in Inventor, but by using uh, the recap software, we were able to uh, manage the surfaces and the points and create the work planes that we needed to, uh, to assist in the design process. We did un uncover some uh, problems early on. Um, and by having the point cloud information that, uh, that allowed us to, uh, to identify those problems early on. Our service department had originally had plans to run the piping through a triangular opening in the stairwell. I know that the photo is kind of bad, but you can see there's a triangular opening there. And they said, hey, we're going to run all the piping through that. 
Um, but using the point cloud information, when we got it back into Inventor, that quickly revealed that that was not going to be an option. And um, there were many other fitment scenarios that were exposed during the uh, design phase when we brought in the point cloud information and looked at it in Inventor. And, and those, uh, those, uh, or those scenarios actually exposed problems that uh, saved us countless hours out in the field. This animation depicts the final piping assembly inside of Autodesk Inventor, and it's the merged realization of the historical scan infrastructure of the past combined with our proposed 3D piping for the future. And all the piping runs were routed and constrained to existing structural steel, which we had not had to model an inventor, but were simply picked up or referenced from the 3D scan, which we had achieved from the Kearney site. This model allowed us to provide detailed drawings of the piping runs with a very high degree of confidence that we could prefabricate them in Welland and send them on site with, without the need for skilled tradespeople on site, yet fit perfectly with a much more streamlined crew and with no interference problems. We did encounter some challenges when merging the two realities together. Um, as I said before, uh, the scan data sometimes reveals rooms or objects that are uh, not built to perfect dimensions, even if you have 3D data available. Sometimes when you scan and overlay the scan data to the, the 3D model that you have, you'll find that some imperfections or maybe a, a column that you thought was in position A is actually over in, col in, in position B. And so uh, the walls and floor are not built squarely in a lot of cases, and so we can run into some problems uh, trying to make that work. But if you know those problems up front, it's, you can combat those uh, challenges without too much of a problem. So in conclusion, I, I'm looking forward to future partnerships with uh, the college and with Niagara Research when it comes to uh, advanced manufacturing technology such as 3D laser scanning. Although the application did have its challenges, it was our first one, it was kind of a pilot project for us. Um, overall, I, I think the lessons learned will definitely help us to be more competitive in the marketplace uh, when we have refurbishment projects of this nature. And believe me, they're going to happen. We're, we're uh, living in, a, in an age where we have aging infrastructure. And um, a lot of that information is only maybe on paper and potentially could be out of date. So using 3D laser technology for us, we were able to cut our project design time by around 60% with an overall increased accuracy beyond that which, which I found measurable anyways. Although the, although the final installation has not been realized as of yet, it's slotted for completion in the fall of 2014. We estimate around a 42% cost savings in time and labor as compared to the conventional methods of having skilled tradespeople uh, on site with all the equipment. I am, I am convinced that laser scanning and point cloud technology is the most logical and cost effective way to bridge that gap that exists between the existing infrastructure that was designed prior to the 3D tools that we had at our disposal and the 3D world that we find ourselves in today. The ability to fully engineer solutions in 3D digital space can only be achieved when we capture the historical data using 3D laser technology. Thus, we embrace our engineering past and build a strong technological future. Thank you.